hello everybody welcome to the channel my name is Lindsay, and this is life with Lindsay. today we have a whip and chat if you do not know what a whip and chat is that is when i work on my current whip wip which is work in progress and you can work on whatever it is that you are working on it can be a house project it can be a craft project it can be while you're driving it can be while you're at work it can be whatever it is you want it to be um there is no right way or wrong way to whip and chat um before i get super into this i do need to let you guys know I am totally under the weather. I've been under the weather for quite a few days. I am going to collect all of my strength and try to get through this the best that I can. I am very behind on videos because I sound like crap. I'm, <laughs> I don't want to put you guys through that. I am going to do my best to make this my regular hour-long video. If you guys are new here, hi, welcome. My name is Lindsay. I do mainly diamond painting and crafting-related content. Um, however... I am, like I said, I am definitely behind right now, and I just, you ever just get sick, and you're like, I just, I just need to get over it, like, I don't know, I don't know how to make it get any better, I've been taking medication for a couple of days, I've been trying to rest and recover the best I can, but my voice sounds like crap, um, I'm super congested, I just, I have content to film, I just want to be able to give you guys the best content, and I think if it sounds off-putting, nobody's going to want to watch it. So, uh, I'm going to do my best to, um, get as much filmed as possible the second I feel better. So, for right now, if you hear some sniffles, um, maybe even some coughing, I will do my best to try to pause the video so that I'm not in your ear with it. But like I said, I'm just totally under the weather, you guys, and it's, it's not fun, um, especially with the way the world is right now, um, so anyway, like I said, if you guys are new, hi, welcome, I'm usually very energetic, uh, so I'm definitely a little bit more somber, if you will, and it's just because I'm, I'm worn out. Uh, if you guys have been here before, welcome back, you guys already know what to expect, so if you guys are noticing that this video is up a couple days late. Yep, it is, and <laughs> there's not much I can do about it. I will um, film another whip and chat for next week, so you might get two whip and chats pretty close together, but uh, it is what it is, and I'm going to stop rambling and just, you know, tell you guys about my week. So, in case anyone is curious, I'm currently working on Beauty and the Beast from Mandy Manzano. This is my entry for... The uh, Tale as Old as Time, DP Along, hosted by Crystal over at Classy Sassy Stitcher. Uh, I put this away for a little bit to work on Hanukkah, which I will make sure to link the unboxing for that up in the eye. Uh, there will be a post review coming for that. Again, I am done it. I've completed it. I just want to make sure that um, I can get through filming of it. Uh, and it sounding okay audio-wise, because, you know, most people are watching or listening, and they're not just having it playing with uh, closed captioning, which, if you do, thank you. I have had a few people reach out to me because English isn't their first language, and they find it easier to understand what I'm saying if they're reading English. So I do make sure to put closed captioning on my videos. If there's ever a video that doesn't have it, uh, please let me know. So, um, where am I? So, I'll tell you guys about my week, in case you were curious. So, Monday, last week we missed OT and speech because both of our providers needed time off, and that's totally fine. They both coincidentally needed the same day off, and now we're down to seeing both of those uh, providers once a month. So it was totally fine. It was no big deal that I had to switch the schedule around. Um, in case anyone is actually like watching, watching, I had a devastating accident with my 14 placer. Um, I've now broken my 14 and my 15. I noticed the larger ones tend to break more at the base and then the smaller ones tend to break more like in the plastic here. Uh, so I do have other large placers. I don't know where I put that multi-pack, so I'm going to have to find those. But, um, anyway, so, I had OT, and our occupational therapist comes to our house, and, um, this 
it was funny. So I had to fill out, we had an IEP meeting and I had to fill out some paperwork. And, you know, one of the questions was about religious holidays. Now I'm not saying this to like ruffle feathers or to get into a war with anyone, but there's a reason why religion isn't supposed to be part of the public school system. And it kind of boggled my mind. Also made me happy that they asked about that because I don't want them enforcing and teaching things about holidays my child doesn't celebrate. Um, not that I'm saying she can't be educated on things outside of her bubble because if you guys have been here before, you've heard me say, I think it's very important. The way we, we have well-rounded children is by teaching them things outside of their bubble. But there's a difference between all of the activities in November and December being focused around Christmas versus learning a little bit about Christmas, learning a little bit about Kwanzaa, learning a little bit about Hanukkah, like things like that. You just need to be more inclusive. So our, <coughs> excuse me, our OT was like, I couldn't remember if you said no to all holidays. And I was like, no, 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 no. Mm. I apologize, you guys. I am really trying my best here. And there's a good chance I'm going to have to film this and then, like, rest and recover and then come back, which I don't want to do. So I'm going to try to power through this. Um, anyway, so I was like, no, 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 we celebrate. The, the non-Christian holidays are fine. She's like, oh, okay. So she did this thing with her where she took one of those brown paper lunch bags and she made a puppet, a turkey puppet. So they're working on um, cutting and gluing and, you know, all these fine motor skills. And um, she put some feathers on the back. If you guys don't know, my kid, there is a house that she sees from her window. So it, it backs up to like our the, the street behind us. Or it's on the street behind us, I should say. Um, and Briar can always see it from her window. And she... They have this giant inflatable turkey. Now, over Halloween, they had this inflatable pumpkin stack. And she would always talk about the pumpkins. But now the pumpkins are gone because they've replaced it with turkeys. And I'm pretty sure after Thanksgiving, they, they replace it with Christmas inflatables. But don't quote me on that. I'm sure you'll hear me talking about that in a, a future whip and chat. Um, but anyway, she loves the turkey. And so she was making this turkey hand puppet. All of a sudden, she busts out this, like, super weird voice, and I'm just looking at her, and it's now her turkey voice. So whenever she talks about the turkey outside, she uses this turkey voice, and whenever she talks about the hand puppet, or uses the hand puppet, she uses this turkey voice, and it's like, oh, hello! I'm like, where did this voice come from? The imagination of children just blows my mind sometimes. Like, I don't know where it came from. I don't know, like, she obviously didn't hear it from somewhere else. Well, I shouldn't say obviously, but I don't think she heard it from somewhere else. Um, if anyone is curious, there's really, like, no rhyme or reason to how I'm painting, diamond painting, this canvas the way I am. It is small enough that it fits nicely on my desk, which I have, I have something to say about that. <laughs> uh... You guys ever buy a canvas and you buy it and you're like, okay, that's that's just about the limitation that fits on my desk. For me, um, the 50-something by 70-something centimeter kits work really well for me. Uh, I can fit them on. They're just about as wide as I can comfortably fit on my desk. I'm trying to slide this without making too much noise, but we'll see. Um, and... Anything, like, much larger than that, I just don't have the width on my desk. It can hang off my desk. I have no problem with that. And, yes, this is a super tangent. This has nothing to do with the uh, <laughs> the turkey talk. Um, so, if you're new here, hi, welcome, here for the rambles. But, anyway, so, um, I purchased a kit recently, and I was like, okay, that's about as big as I can go on my desk. Uh, if one side of my project is about 60 centimeters is probably like max I can fit on this desk comfortably. So if one side of it is much bigger than that, but one, the other side is 
that size or smaller, then I can make it work. If I have to work on a canvas completely sideways, I will. So I purchased this canvas and um, then they changed the listing size and they said they had made a mistake. And now it's going to be too large to comfortably work on my desk and I don't know what to do. So if you guys, um, I, don't, I really don't know what to do. Part of me thinks that if I take everything off my desk, I can try to make it work. But the problem with that is then like, where am I going to put my my drills and my pen and like I've got so much random crap on my desk it's unreal but that's not why you guys are here so anyway back to OT so we were making these turkeys and this kid and her imagination I have a child who is really fantastic at imaginative and self-play I know not every kid her age is like that um and I'm I'm super happy, like, when I see, like, this kid can get lost in something for a really, really long time. There's also a really good chance that part of that is because she's hyper-focusing. <sighs> anyway, and that's something I do as, um, an AD, I guess ADHD adult. Uh, I've dealt with that my whole entire life. I actually was diagnosed, um, when I was, like, five years old. So, um... But yeah, she made the voice. It was super funny. And then we went over to speech. And um, speech is over at, uh, it's held inside a church. Like that's where her speech pathologists, speech pathologists offices. Well, that's really hard to say when you have a list. Um, but we played on the playground and her speech teacher has told us, like, if you guys come and you want to play on the playground, like, before your session starts, that's totally fine, um, and for us, like, we don't live very far from it, but because of, like, the length of time we have for OT, and then the amount of time we have between OT and speech, sometimes it just makes sense for us to go and let her run around, because if I just put her back in the house, I have a short window of time, and then it's harder to transition from that into, okay, well, now that you're playing with your own toys, it's time to go. So we went, and, um, <coughs> excuse me, I am, I am really, really trying here, you guys. I do, I really do apologize, because, um, behind the scenes, you guys haven't seen it, I have already paused this video probably a dozen times so that I could cough or clear my throat, and I'm really trying not to do that into the microphone, because, um, I know it doesn't sound appealing, <laughs> uh, but you guys can already hear it in me, I'm sure, of my voice, um, it sounds raspy, it sounds tired, it sounds out of breath, it sounds about how good I feel, so, anyway, we went over to the playground, and then she kept asking me to put her on the swing, like, over and over and over again, so, it's one of those regular, like, seat swings, and so I would put her, like, place her butt onto the swing. And the second I put her on it, she would wiggle right off and then ask me to put her back on. And I was like, kid, you are driving mommy insane. Either stay on the, on the swing or do it yourself. Like, I'm not going to keep putting you back on. Well, uh, apparently that made me, like, the worst mom on the planet because she had a complete freak out over it, and, I mean, she did it probably four or five times in a row before I was finally like, this is the last one, I think, like, the fourth time I said, this is the last time, I'm, I'm not gonna keep picking you up and putting you back on the seat, so, um, sorry, I'm working with two colors here, she, uh, it was the last time, and then she freaked out, and it was, like, a total disaster, she refused to come inside when it was time for speech, she refused to listen or acknowledge, um, like, my speech teacher had to go, like, we, I was like, okay, Briar, I'm going inside then, and her and I were standing inside the door, and she was outside, still having a tantrum now. She wasn't, she was still being watched. It wasn't like we just, like, left her there and wandered off. Um, there's, like, a big glass window in the door. It's one of those, like, fire escape doors. Um, anyway... This is so rambly, you guys. This is probably more rambly than normal. Anyway, so she was like, Briar, if you don't come in now, and Briar was like, no, and she's like, this is just like my daughter, and I'm like, well, at least I know that we'll survive, because you've been through this. <laughs> but she ended up having to go get a bubble gun 
And if you don't know what that is, it's like a toy. You have bubbles in like a canister, and then when you hit the trigger, like bubbles just shoot out of it. It's it's electronic. It's battery operated usually. Um, and batteries, batteries. Um, bubbles are definitely one of those things that my kid is driven by. So eventually she came in and I was like, cool, thanks. Uh, but it was so weird to have to like lure my child in to speech because normally she sees her speech teacher and she's like, yay. You know, she loves hanging out with her speech teacher and her speech teacher loves hanging out with her. She actually told me that like when she had her meeting with her supervisor, she's like, but I love Briar. She's so much fun. You know, because they cut back her services. Um, but they have assured me they will not pull her from any of her services before they get to see how she experiences and interacts with peers, age-appropriate peers. So, um, we went in, we had speech, and then I had a chiropractor appointment, which reminds me I need to probably reschedule the one for tomorrow. Um... You guys, I feel like I've gone so off the rails. But um, she went with me to the chiropractor. And we did our stretches together. Which I think is really funny that she like lays on the floor with me and she does them with me. And then she totally like destroyed the gym. And I'm like, kid. And I even said to her, can you not destroy the gym? And if you guys are wondering. So they have like a section with, I guess, yoga mats or whatever. And you lay on the floor. Now, everybody that does the stretches there, doesn't necessarily do the same stretches, because not everybody is there for the same reason. Like, there was a woman in there who was stretching on, I want to say it was, like, her upper back, shoulders, uh, so she wasn't doing the same stretch as we were, but Briar found a bucket of, um, like, additional resistance bands and other tools and kept emptying, and I was like, Briar, you know, like, I can only do so much, like, if I'm in the middle of stretching... I can't really wrangle her, but I'm doing the best that I can because, again, there were other people in there this time. Most of the time, I'm the only person in the gym or I'm there with the uh, the rehab specialist, but uh, that was not the case this time. But I had asked um, the rehab specialist, I said, what strength resistance bands is, is she using, as in my daughter? Uh, I use a 10-pound um, resistance band that is connected to the wall. I sit on, like, one of those, uh, I guess exercise balls, and I use the resistance bands, and I do, like, cross-body. Meanwhile, my child is over there with a 30-pound resistance band going all the way from the wall to the ground and back up. She said they were actually really impressed with her. My, my kid is, like, an ant. Like, she can lift her own body weight, or more than her own body weight. It's crazy how strong this kid is, but I am struggling here, you guys. The things we do for others, right? <laughs> Actually, I really, I really enjoy sitting down and doing these whip and chats because it gives me an opportunity to, um, you know, talk about whatever, something that's weighing on me, something I want to talk about, um... I know some creators love doing regular whipping chats and others feel like it's kind of a chore. Um, I love this because it gives me like a platform. But uh, anyway, so let's see. Um, so I was on the decompression table. So the way that my sessions work is I get adjusted by the chiropractor. And then, and I'm on currently on like a care plan uh, I actually should be graduating, graduating, I say, like, with quotes, um, in the next, like, week or two, I believe, and my care plan includes a, an adjustment by the chiropractor, excuse me, a session in the gym, and a session on the decompression table, so I was on the decompression table, which, when I'm on the table, that is the hardest part of my sessions when my child is around. Not that I don't love my kid. And I know some people are like, then why do you take her with you? Um, I've asked, and they, they've told me it's not a problem that she comes. I'm going to try to 
shift a few things around here. So if you guys hear like crunching plastic, uh, that's what's happening. And um, she's usually very good. It's just sometimes hard to wrangle in certain things because um, when I'm on the table, for example, my kiddo, if she's not directly to my left or my right of my head, I can't see her. So the way it works is I'm strapped to a table um, on my back and then the table stretches my body based off of weight. Um, like their kind of weight. It's not like the weight of my body. And the whole point is to stretch and help decompress, in my instance, my lower spine. Um, so I'm on the table and like my kiddo is just over here, over there. And it's hard because like, I'll tell her, Briar, I need you to sit in here. And I use my phone camera, like I'll put it above my head to see if I can see where she is. Um, and you know, most of the time she just hangs out in the gym area, which is directly behind us. And, and most of the time, if I tell her like, Briar, I need you to stay in here, she will. Um, uh, but sometimes, you know, she's a toddler or a preschooler. I don't know. What is it? What are they called after the age of three? A preschooler? A child? I don't know. Tiny human? She's a tiny human now. So, uh, <laughs> I get off the table and I was like, I felt like that weight wasn't anything. Uh, usually I feel like a really good stretch when I do it. And I was like, well, you know, I didn't really feel much. And then I sat up and I tried to get off the table. Oh, my God, I don't know what I did, you guys. I tweaked something, and it wasn't in the same place I normally have my pain. Um, so I ended up having to wait to see the chiropractor again so she could give her recommendation of what to do, which, first of all, was to go back down a weight. Um, and then she had me, I got that K-tape. I think it's kinesthetic tape, I think is what it's called. If I'm wrong, I'm sure, sure somebody will correct me down below. But um, I've had it before, and I don't have a lot of success with it staying on my body. Not necessarily that it doesn't work, but it, it can't work if it's not attached. You know what I mean? Um, if you don't know what it is, if you've ever seen athletes, mainly athletes, sometimes you'll see it on, like, pregnant women. It's just a thick tape. It almost looks like they have, like, duct tape on certain parts of their body. And really what it's doing is, like, lifting or pulling or um, helping to stretch. That's why it's often used with athletes. Um, but they taped me back up. Uh, but because I had to wait for the doctor again and all of this other stuff, my appointment was like an hour long and like Briar did such a good job, all things considered. Uh, so I ended up at one point pulling up, uh, like four minute mini episodes of Paw Patrol on YouTube because they're like, they gave her something to color she had, like, a sheet of paper, but all they had was a mechanical pencil. And I shouldn't say it, like, all they had, because it's not their responsibility to provide tools for people who bring their kids. Um, and I have stuff, typically, but I didn't bring in my full diaper bag because, uh, you know, we were just going for a quick appointment. Well, what I thought was a quick appointment. Um, but, oh my gosh, you guys, that was horrible, 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 uh, and I ended up getting the K-tape, a strip across, like, if I were gonna have, like, a lower back tattoo, it was, like, there was the, a big, thick piece, and then from that point up to my shoulder blades, two long strips, and obviously the point was to help the lower back and to, like, help pull it up, because the pain was in, like, my back and my hips, but, so this was one of those days, if you guys didn't know, I tried to take my daughter with me or out of the house in general, um, like once a week now so that my husband can have a day fully undisturbed to get a lot of work done. Um, and this was that day. So we've done it a few times where we, days that she has therapy excuse me, I just take her with me, so, um, we did that, and then, like, part of the deal was, okay, well, I, I get to take you out to lunch, but now that we were already, like, way behind on our schedule, 
the timing for everything just, you guys, lunch was so late that day. We ended up at a Mexican restaurant that I've been to once. I'm pretty sure I've been to once. My husband says he's never been there before. Obviously, my daughter hasn't been there unless she's, like, partying it up in the middle of the night. I guess they wouldn't be open in the middle of the night. Don't don't listen to me. Um, but she's so funny. We were sitting in there, and she's looking, and she's like, Look, Mommy, they have a pothos, which, if you guys didn't know, my kiddo loves our plants. I have a terrible black thumb, and I really really put in a lot of, like, effort into, um, propagating and growing some houseplants. I've, I've been, uh, lucky enough to have a couple people give me some cuttings that I have, uh, potted or propagated. I've got a huge monstera downstairs that is still propagating in water. It definitely needs to be potted, but I'm terrified that I will kill it in the transition, but she was pointing out all of their, um, the different plants they had, and when we were at lunch, it's one of those places where, and I don't think it was like this pre-COVID, but you place your order at the counter, then you have a number on your table, and they just bring the food to you, but it's not like table service, and, which is fine, I totally, not a problem, but because of that, you know, my daughter kept getting up and, like, trying to wander around, I was like, kiddo, they're going to be have people bringing food out. Like, you can't be walking back and forth. You know, it's not a a restaurant where there aren't people walking. And I just... She just has no awareness of people around her sometimes. And the last thing we need is for her to, like, accidentally knock. Like, a wait like a wait staff person over or, you know, make them dodge her because they're carrying hot food. And, uh, it was, she was tired. She was exhausted. She was hungry. It was just one of those, like everything that could go wrong went wrong. And then we got to go out in the car and it was super windy and something flew out of her hand. It was something like a receipt or something, but she acted like it was the end of the world. And if you've ever been around a small child, they're like dictators, so even if it's not, like, that big of a deal to you, oh my god, it's, like, the end of the world to her, and then, go get that now, and I'm like, girlfriend, you cannot tell mommy what to do, that's, that's not how this works, I'm gonna see if I can move my storage, oh god, that's probably not gonna work out well, you know what, Lindsay, don't, don't sacrifice, oh lord, oh, if anyone's watching this, like, I hope they're entertained <laughs> and I mean like watching with your eyeballs not just like listening to me in the background because I know that's what most people are doing is just listening but I am using the Harbor Freight uh I don't know what this container is I want to say it was Nana of Seven Crafts that did the original video on this it's a big container that you can hold uh two and a half of the 24 piece kits I don't know if I can show you guys on camera. So I have like the regular Harbor Freight storage containers, but they're in a larger storage holder. Anyway, I feel like this video is probably so long and rambly. And part of it is because I have to keep pausing. And, um, I'm really hoping that when editing Lindsay plays this back for, you know, purposes of where to put the cards and stuff in the eye, that it sounds somewhat cohesive. You know, if not, there's always next week! But anyway, we went to, uh, she wanted to get band-aids. My, ugh, she cut her hand, like, right here on her palm, and it's one of those spots that it, a regular band-aid buckles, so it's super awkward to put it there, but other band-aids were not sticking, so I was like, she really wanted to go to Target to get a new Band-Aid because Target has everything and she thought she could get a toy. But I was like, girlfriend, it is too late now. Like, we are... I'll just go to the, the store and get Band-Aids myself. Um, which, of course, then was like, why won't you take me to get Band-Aids? Like, kid. And I know. The reason she really wanted to go get Band-Aids is because there was ulterior motives of, ooh, they have stuff. I like stuff. Can I get more stuff? And, uh, speaking of stuff, so, you know, my kiddo's birthday is 
when I'm filming this in real time, it's actually her birthday today. So, um, happy birthday, B. But all these people in our family have been reaching out and asking us, like, what to get her for her birthday. And I've very explicitly said, my child does not need any more stuff. She has more than enough stuff, and we have nowhere to put stuff. Um, normally, I am all about experiences, but it's harder to plan that kind of stuff out being in, in still in a pandemic, and um, we're heading into winter, <sighs> all sorts of things. So I, of course, had let the family know if they really wanted to do something to contribute to her birthday. Um... They were all more than uh, welcome to, that doesn't belong there, to contribute uh, financially, I, I don't know how else to say this, to my daughter's ice skating lessons. Uh, that is something that we do regularly, that is the most social activity that she engages in, and um, she would love that, and uh, I can tell you zero people have done that. Although my sister did say to me she would absolutely do that instead of sending her something. So, um, which like nobody needs to send her stuff anyway. You know, it's the holidays are coming up. People want to buy gifts, but the problem is like if a it doesn't even have to be a parent. I am one of those people, and tell me how you guys feel about this. Um, registries were made for a reason. Uh, like wedding gift registries, baby registries, things like that. My mom, for example, is one of those people that if she doesn't like anything that's on the registry, she won't get it because she doesn't like it. But in reality, the registry is not for the purchase purchaser. It's for the person who they are purchasing gifts for. Now, I'm not sitting here and saying that gifts are ever required for anything. Like, let's put that out there right now. But at the end of the day, if you are going to somebody's event and it is customary to bring gifts or it's for a holiday that is customary to exchange gifts for... Um, you know, you should requ respect the recipient's wishes. So, I, it just frustrates me when I say, like, she doesn't need more toys and then a box of toys shows up. And I know it probably makes me sound super ungrateful and that's not at all what I'm doing, but, like, my kid would be just as happy, and this is not an exaggeration, with a box full of receipts. She calls them lists, and you can even ask, like, Miranda from Dining, Diamond Painting with the Besties has actually sent Briar, like, an envelope just full of receipts because she totes them around and she thinks they're lists and she thinks it's the coolest thing ever. So, like, she would literally have that much excitement over a box of lists as she would with a box of toys. And also, we're at that age where she's starting to become demanding about certain things. Anyway, I just went super, super off the rails. I feel like I've been talking about Monday for a half hour. I sure have. So, anyway, long story short, um, we, after her nap, we went to Joanne's to get fabric and yarn uh, for my husband. Please be proud of me. I bought absolutely nothing for myself. Woohoo! Um... Which, you know, that's hard when you go into a craft store, you know, and you're like, ooh, I want this and I want this. My husband needed something for one of his uh, customs, and uh, I was happy to join him, and uh, of course the tiny human was with us. And then we went to dinner. I mean, I, when I tell you guys, like, Monday was a day, Monday was a day. And also, um, it's probably good that I'm taking a really long time on Monday, because... Half of this week was spent just being sick in bed. So, um, anyway, we went to Longhorn Steakhouse for dinner. Have you ever just had an experience where the restaurant experience was awful um, from the moment you walked in? Well, that was us. So, we sat down. We had a young guy. He was our waiter. Um, he was schmoozing with a table of elderly women Instead of paying attention to the rest of his tables, which, all right, bro, you think you're going to get a good tip out of them from schmoozing? Like, okay, but how about the other people here? So, um, so we sat down and I asked him if he could put my daughter's order in right away, to which he responded, no. And I was like, I'm sorry, what? 
And he's like, I can't put her food ahead. There's other people who were here before you. And I don't know if he thought I meant, like, ahead of everybody else's order in the restaurant. And I was like, okay, well, like, I know that's not true. Because most restaurants, if you tell them you want to put the kids' order in right away, it'll come out with the appetizers or as soon as it's ready. Because let's face it, most kids' meals are not something that are taking expansive amount of times to make. So, um, that annoyed me. And then, um, she ordered, uh, oh, I have to sneeze, hold on. Um, she ordered, I think it was chicken tenders, I don't even remember at this point. And her side was fruit, and we asked for water. And in her mind, she somehow thought she was getting juice. Now, he comes out, and he brings out our water, and she's like, where's my juice? And I said, kiddo, we didn't get you juice, we just got you water. Now, how do I know this guy doesn't have kids? His immediate response was, well, you have fruit coming with your dinner. That's like drinking juice. And I'm like, oh my god, why would you bring up the juice again? And also, like... You're pointing out the fact that she doesn't have any food when she's hungry. Um, so he comes out. He brings out the appetizers. He brings out the salads. And I was like, could you at least, at the very least, bring out her fruit? And he's like, oh, sure. Um, as if this was like a mind-blowing request. So he brought out the fruit, which, listen, I wasn't expecting a whole lot. But what I wasn't expecting was they literally just put an orange and they, they quartered it and put it into a cup. Uh, fun fact, my kid eats citrus fruits with the rind on, like, lemons, oranges, tangerines, I don't know why. Tangerines, not so much, because we actually, like, open them up for her. Um, but yeah, so here she is, like, eating her oranges. So, I'm super annoyed, because, you know, he clearly isn't understanding that the reason we put in her order before the rest of ours is so her food would come out first. And that didn't happen. And so now he's bringing out all this food for the adults and nothing for the kids. And so he finally brought the fruit out. She was eating the fruit. And then um, he brought out the dinner. And my husband is separating, like, opening up her chicken tenders so that they cool down. And he's like, oh, these are, these are already fine. Which means that they had been done and sitting there for a while, which... That's a super awesome feeling. And then he's like, oh, mine's not really warm. Now, I didn't get to eat mine. Um, he brought it out and put it on the table and walked away. And I went to cut the first bite. Again, it was Longhorn, so I was ordering a steak. Very fancy. Uh, and there was a long, dark hair across my mashed potatoes. Now, if you guys have never seen me or my daughter... We both have very light hair. Um, my husband does have long hair, but he was on the other side of the table. And so I flagged down our waiter and I let him know, like, hey, man, um, there's actually a hair in my food. He leans down as far as he can without, like, physically putting his face on my plate as if he doesn't believe that that hair is there. Like, you can clearly see it right across the white mashed potatoes. So he takes it and I... Um, I was very thankful. I was like, thank you very much. And then he comes back out a few minutes later. And when I tell you this guy, I, I don't even know how to describe his attitude. He's like, I don't know what to tell you. But when I brought that out of the kitchen, there was no hair on it. So and he's just looking at me and I go, I'm sorry, are you implying that I put that hair there myself? And he just kind of looked at me and shrugged and was very accusatory and I was like, I'm sorry, sir, but if you can't tell, I have very light hair, and this is a very dark hair. Now, this guy had super short hair, so it wasn't like I was implying that it was his, either. Like, I never I never said, this is your hair. So he goes, well, maybe a hair flew off of somebody's head as I was walking and just landed on your food. Okay, whatever the situation is, bro, like, we need to take care of it. You accusing the customer of putting the hair in their own food is not what we call kosher. So I was like, you know what? Forget it. Let me just talk to the manager. Manager comes over and I am not one of those people. If you guys have seen, I've had posts and at like whipping chats on here where I talk about we need to be um, more patient and kinder with our like wait staff because like the whole world is short staffed and they decided to show up. 
But there's a huge difference between being patient with somebody who deserves it and um, compassionate towards somebody who is trying their best versus somebody who, from the get-go, has given you a negative experience and then is now uh, trying to accuse you of, you know, that's why the hair is on the table. Like, what the F? Um, so... I was talking to the manager and she's like, I can't believe he wouldn't put your daughter's order in first because they can absolutely do that. And I'm like, oh, I'm aware. Like, I've been doing this with my kid for as long as she's been eating in restaurants. And, um, you know, she's like, I'm so sorry. Would you like us to replace your your meal? And I was like, I'm going to be completely honest with you at this point. I don't trust that that that, that waiter isn't going to try to tamper with my food. And she's like, I am so sorry. You know, please let us make this up to you. And you know, the manager did a great job. She really tried to smooth things over. But um, at that point, we had already been at the restaurant for, I think, over an hour. And my kid didn't have it in her to sit there for another, you know, 30, 40 minutes while I waited for a meal to be cooked and then brought out. And so, unfortunately, that's where it ended for me. And I was super frustrated. That was... That was a really long, long, hard day. So, um, how are we on time? Okay. So the next day was her skating lesson. It was her head coach's last, uh, session for a little while. She is going in for surgery this week and, um, I don't know how long she'll be out, but it made me sad to know that she wasn't going to be able to be there for Briar's, uh, birthday party. But, you know, obviously my main concern is her and her recovery and her health and um, praying that everything goes well for her. So if you guys are the praying type or the, you know, put good energy out there, uh, if you could keep her in your thoughts, that would be fantastic because we need her in tip-top shape. She is an amazing coach and um, my kiddo and so many other kiddos have learned so much under her, and I, uh, just, I just, I hope, I pray for a speedy recovery for her, but, um, we did that, and then we went to, there's a restaurant nearby, like, literally down the street that we went to for lunch, their food is pretty meh, but, uh, the waitress that works there, shout out to, uh, Miss Kayla, she is amazing, she clearly knows what she's doing, uh, but she was able to get my kid to eat more food than I was able to get my kid to eat. So, uh, also shout out to you for that. <laughs> uh, but you know, it's always funny when you're like, I can't believe my kid is listening to a total stranger, but they're not listening to me. Um, but then we went to five below. Um, we had told her cause she likes to do stuff after ice skating. <coughs> Excuse me. And, um, Five Below felt like I could make, set better parameters than Target, for example. Because if I say to my kid at Target, you can get one toy. Well, one toy could be $100 at Target. Five Below, uh, everything is $5 or less. Actually, that's not true. Now they have a section that's like five and beyond, and it's like electronics and stuff like that. That's, you know, I still don't think anything was that expensive. I think like $8 was the most that I saw. But, um... We had told her, you know, you can go in and you can get one thing. So she wanders around with me and my husband. And then she um, found these little Paw Patrol figures. And she was all like, this is what I want. And then she saw these My Little Pony knockoffs. And then that became what she wanted. Um, and then... She saw these Disney-inspired rubber ducks, and then she, so she was really between everything. She ended up going with the My Little Ponies, which I was actually pretty surprised she picked that over the Paw Patrol. But she, you know, made the decision, and you could see she was going through the th thought process, and then she would say, okay, well, no, I don't want this, I want this instead. And she did a really good job, and of course, like, my husband and I bought her other stuff as well, but it wasn't like, the stuff she was asking for, like, I got, we got some activity books and coloring books, things that, uh, like, we love to have activity books to put in the diaper bag for when we go to restaurants or, you know, to visit the grandparents, things like that, because they're easy, they're easy on the go kind of things, 
you know, they're usually not very expensive. And um, we have a couple dry erase ones now. So those are great because even if she does the whole thing, you can wipe it off and start over. As opposed to like a coloring book, if they color on it, that's where the page end is. And ends. Gosh, I can't speak. But they also had some really cute crafts that I picked up. And I was thinking about doing a video on some of the Five Below crafts. If you guys would like to see that, let me know down below. I will probably film that at some point um because they have some really cute stuff and i would love to share that with you guys uh but let me know down below interested in in seeing some of the crafts that i got uh what else do we do i got new headphones because somehow uh my husband and i both lost our bluetooth headphones and uh mine came from that beyond section but i like i said i think that they were like eight dollars um are you guys team earbuds or team over the ear headphones because I prefer over the ear instead of in ear. Um, but I'm coming to find like I feel like everything is uncomfortable. You know, I grew up in the uh the era of Walkmen and Discmen, so they had the real foamy crappy with the metal headband earbuds. Anyway. Um throwing my my age out there. Uh and then Wednesday I woke up with this, like, massive neck, shoulder, like, shoulder blade, upper back pain, which, uh, spoiler alert, I am still dealing with, and, uh, my daughter had kinder music, but she was going to kinder music with her head teacher, and my husband and I had a little breakfast date, so what we did was we took her over to kinder music, her teacher took her in, and then when it was over, we reconvened, and we chatted and um she said Briar did a fantastic job every kid that walked in she said hi to um she engaged in all the songs um she so she hangs on to sky typically they have this activity where like the stuffed animals are out in the beginning and then they put them all away and she'll put all of the other ones away but she'll hang on to usually sky and um sky is from Paw Patrol if anyone doesn't know and that's, like, her security blanket. Uh, and we've actually talked to one of her other therapists, and she was saying, like, it's good that she attaches to something that's, like, there, as opposed to us bringing a toy with us and her um, being territorial or whatever you want to call it about her own toys. So it's it's good that she has this connection to toys that aren't hers in that kind of way that it, so it soothes her, but not in a way that it is distracting. Um, but my husband and I drove over to Dunkin' Donuts. We got ourselves, like, some breakfast sandwiches. I got a coffee. He got a tea. And we just sat in the parking lot and uh, had our little breakfast date. We were thinking about going, like, somewhere else, but we didn't think we had enough time for, like, a sit-down restaurant, which, honestly, I don't know if we would have or not, but it was nice to even if it was just, like, hanging out in the car, to just have that time with my husband. Um, after going out for my birthday, like, I really realized, like, how important it is for us to carve time together outside of the home. Like, my husband and I spend every evening together after we're done crafting and, and whatnot. We spend time watching TV and, um, or a movie or whatever it is, but it's not the same thing as being out kid free outside of your own home if that makes sense so uh it was nice we really enjoyed it and then uh brian got this paint cubby if you guys didn't know kevin from kevin's creations is like a real life local friend of ours um and if you haven't checked him out i will make sure to link all of his information down below uh you can check him out on etsy and he has an instagram and a facebook and he made this, basically it's like a, a cubby for all of my husband's paints and supplies that sits on his desk, and it has holes so he can put like the bottles of paint, that looked really inappropriate, um, bottles of paint in them, uh, he just uses like acrylic paint, and then uh, spots for like solo cups, so he can put in his paint brushes and tools and things like that, and um, it, it came out beautifully but we went to his house to pick it up because like I said he's local to us and um you know Briar didn't understand like we weren't going somewhere we were just literally going to Mr. Kevin's house 
and she wanted to get out and like go do stuff and I was like Briar like we're like yeah just <sighs> it was hard but uh we did that and then we had lunch at a diner that we have not eaten at since pre-covid and it's one of those diners I feel like a lot of diners are like this where like the majority of the clientele are like all of the seniors in the town they're all there they're always there it does not matter what time of day it is but my daughter planted herself on the outside of the table and I was like Briar you cannot because if you get up once like that's where all of the wait staff was walking behind her and it was just a constant battle of like sit in the seat put your butt in the seat I don't know what it is about kids not wanting to sit like I don't know why don't you want to sit kid why won't you put your butt in the seat and she literally was like eating nothing and then finally I don't know why and I know people are going to tell me that like I have to stop doing this because um she has to do it on her own but all of a sudden I loaded her fork for her and she ate almost all the eggs that were on her plate and I don't understand why this kid won't eat certain things unless you feed them to her. Like, girlfriend. Um, for some reason, mac and cheese is one of those. I think for mac and cheese, she has a hard time keeping the noodles on the fork, and then she gets frustrated. Uh, but, like, we keep telling her, like, if you're in a classroom setting, kiddo, like, they're not gonna feed you. You're not a baby. You're... She likes to tell us, I'm a big girl. Like, okay, well then, you need to do what big girls do, and, uh, you know, keep your butt in the seat. Like, I don't mind her getting up but if she wanted to be moving around we let her know this is the seat you need to sit in not this one and um of course she was dicking around with the chair the chair fell over the whole restaurant looked and gasped and it's like ah, kid um and there was definitely like the people at the table behind us who you could tell that they like they just kept rolling their eyes at briar as if like she was being bad which I would just like to state I, my kid's not being bad sometimes she has behavior that isn't good but that doesn't make her a bad person so um and then we started watching the new Tiger King which we have already finished I mean it wasn't very long um anybody watching Tiger King Tiger King 2 let me know down below um I have thoughts it definitely wasn't as like holy moly as the first season one was but um Man, the exotic animal world is very strange, and um, if you guys didn't know, fun fact, my husband's very first pop that he ever did to see if this was something he could do as a money-making thing and not just, you know, a fun hobby was the Tiger King, and that is the only one he has ever made that uh, is not and will not be for sale. But if you want your own Tiger King, I'm sure he can do one. So, Thursday... Um, my husband did this at-home kit from, it's actually a friend of ours, him, his wife started this business, it's called The Playful Peach, and it's this, like, DIY watercolor paint kit, and you get all the stuff, and you paint these little sheets, and then you send them back, and then she turns it into jewelry or keychains, um, so they did that. If I have the photo, I'll throw it up here. Uh, this is obviously the before, but this was something like my daughter loves. She loves painting and, and things like that. And uh, daddy is definitely much more creative with that kind of stuff than I am. So they did that. It was a super chill day. Um, I, I think that's the day that I started to not feel good. Um, but, and I will also leave all the information for the Playful Peach down below if you guys want to check them out. We watched one of the uh, Alvin and the Chipmunks movie. Actually, Briar was a little bit under the weather. She woke up. She had a little bit of runny nose. Her runny nose only lasted, like, I think two days. Um, I don't even know how many days I'm on over here. But it was just rough. And then Friday and Saturday and Sunday all just consisted of the same thing, just being home, doing nothing, um, she has watched a lot of Scooby-Doo, that's how you can tell, um, there's sickness in this house, because, you know, I'm not the put my kid in front of the TV kind of person, um, no shame if you are that kind of person, like, everybody parents differently, and, you know, what works for me isn't universal, what works for you isn't universal, and, uh, it's just, 
it's one of those, like, this is really kicking my butt, and I'm really, like, I've been sleeping so much. The other day I slept, I think, like, five hours during the day, and then I ended up going to bed at, like, eight o'clock, and then who woke up in the middle of the night for, like, four hours? Me. Um, but I was so uncomfortable. It just, ugh. I, I hate being sick, and I hate knowing that, like, my kid wants to go do stuff, but we can't go do stuff because mommy doesn't feel good. Um, but she went with daddy to do some errands, and, um, she was super excited to get out of the house. But I think this is where I'm going to leave you guys. I am almost done this color. <laughs> Excuse me. And, um, I, my throat is super dry and on fire. And, um, like I said, I've got more videos planned for you guys. I have uh, a small shop haul that I'd like to get filmed. I have, um, that's that craft video. Um, I would like to film that. And then I've got just a couple other, like I have a post review that I want to film. I just, I want my voice to sound okay. I mean, like selfishly. And I also want like my body to feel okay so that it's not beyond exhausting just sitting here for however long to film um because it does it takes a lot out of you and I I'm actually filming this right now while nobody else is in the house which is it that never happens um but uh I know that chance isn't gonna happen again so that's why I took this and uh that's all I got for you guys for this one. I do apologize that this is up way, way, way later than normal. Uh, I hope that you guys did enjoy this video. Um, and that you uh, are excited to potentially see another <laughs> Whip and Chat in not that many days away from now. But if you guys enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more content like this or, you know, nothing like this at all, please make sure to give this video two thumbs up. One real life, one virtual. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Come. Join the Sparkle Squad. While you're there, hit that notification bell. I do not operate on any sort of schedule. I operate on toddler standard time, and I record my tiny human is sleeping or sleeping. Thank you guys so, so much for being here, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye, guys!